Um, and um, we'll, we'll start the, the meeting off then. Um, let me just move to the agenda, which is call to order, which you just did. There is a discussion for the 2020 grand list. Uh, our, our town assessor will join us later and we'll squeeze her into the um, into the agenda as uh, as as uh, we deem appropriate. So we'll start right off. I told Dave Putnam he'd be up first. I don't know if that's such a good thing, Dave. Um, I, I know, um, you know, you always present a good budget and, um, and, and, and this year is no different. Um, you know, we had some discussion about your budget and all that, but still you're, you're a great department head, uh, uh, great leader. And it's good to start our season off with you, Mr. Putnam. So, uh, mm-hmm. but the um, budget number 421 is Parks and Rec. Dave, um, you have some changes coming up in your department and you had some proposed changes. Feel free to discuss them. Right, right, absolutely. So um, we do have a retirement. Well, first of all, let me introduce Tom Beebe. Tom's with us. Tom is our new, um, our new chairman of the Park and Rec Commission. So uh, Tom is on here, um, and so I want to welcome Tom to his first budget, uh, first budget go around with the Park and Rec, and uh, you know glad to have him as our as our chair. So we're looking forward to his leadership uh, moving forward. So thanks, Dave. Uh, thank, thank you for your service, Tom. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. So we do, uh, as Mark mentioned, we, we have some changes coming up in our department. We have a retirement uh, as of June 30. Uh, right now is Carol Roster, who has actually been with the town for 49 years. Um, she started in 1972 as a student in Southern, but she'll be retiring as our program coordinator as of June 30 of this year. And so, uh, you know, um, someone that has uh, made a huge commitment to our community for a, a, a long time and uh, and so that provided us with an opportunity to look at our department and uh, I, and bring some suggestions forward to the Park and Rec Commission and one of those suggestions was to reformat or restructure our department so I, I thought it was a good time to look at that I had put in the budget for um, and, and it done some different job description things for a director an assistant director which would be a new position and a program coordinator. So our, the number of people would not have changed in our department. It just would have been a restructuring of our department and kind of looking at what our needs are down the road and, and where that would look at and, and how that would look. And so we had some preliminary discussions with Mark and Anna at the beginning. And, um, and, and then so what Mark has recommended is that we stick with our current format which is uh, the director, myself, and two program coordinators. And so um, one of our program coordinators right now, which Carol is, is mostly in charge of programming or on the park and rec side. And then Mike McDowell is our other program coordinator who handles our youth services end of it and also does special events for our department. So um, that will continue based on March recommendations my recommendations and the commission's recommendations were to change that structure and then um, and, and so that we'd have a director, assistant director, program coordinator, keep the assistant director's responsibilities more towards uh, budgeting and parks and then also do special events. And then our program coordinator would then handle all the programming uh, end of it. So that's kind of what we'd look for and, and um, so I don't know if anybody has any questions on that or anything, but um, we we are moving forward with Mark's uh, proposed budget uh, that we have here. So um, I didn't know if you're you're <laughs> delicately tiptoeing through that conversation, Dave. You did a good job. <laughs> I'm not I'm not um, stepping on the boss too badly, but yeah, I mean, you, you, listen, Mike Mike McDowell's done a great job for our town, for you, for your department, for youth services for event planning, et cetera. And he is a, a, a natural leader in the position. I just couldn't support elevating with a significant increase in pay um, to an assistant director position without a substantial um, change. And the only other change could be is to make the 
person up front, the receptionist, also the program coordinator, but we're, we weren't prepared to make that move right now. So, um, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, I, I'm, I, I, I'm glad you brought it up, Dave. I'm, I, I thank you for being cautious about it, but I want the commission to know, I want the, the board of selectmen to know that, you know, we were facing a recommendation from the Parks and Rec Commission and, and its leader, its, its director to um, elevate someone to an assistant director position. Um, if there are any questions. Well, one more point before, and, and maybe just bring up your whole, maybe go through your whole budget. You are also adding a maintainer. Right, correct. Um, onto your staff. This, these are the guys that come with us and trim the trees and clean up all the properties, et cetera. Um, and, you know, our, our, that responsibility has grown over the years um, and might even grow some more in the coming years. Right. Um, and, you know, with all the act, outdoor activity we have saw this past year, but going forward, um, uh, reminding everyone that we cut a maintainer position a year or two ago um, to put on more part-timers. We'd like to switch that back to full-time maintainer. So your staff then would be what, four guys full-time? Yeah. Four full-time and right. And the, the budget shows four full-time and then I would reduce one of those seasonal maintainers. So I would take a seasonal maintainer away from what we usually do in the part-time seasonal. I think that's really important with you know, some new things that have come on board recently. Um, it, it's just been uh, a struggle for us with three full-time maintainers to keep that level of service um, that we're used to. And like Mark had mentioned, it, it, probably three years ago, we had lost that. We had, we had four-time full, four full-time maintainers, four. And so I'd like to get back to that. And, and I think it'd be a big, big help for our department. And, uh, and so I have that in the budget as starting in a half year. So that person would start in January of 2022. So it wouldn't be a big, uh, such a big hit to this year's budget. Mark, on the assistant director, how many departments have assistant directors in the town, if any? Well, you can consider uh, Bill Shear and the assistant, uh, it is uh, the uh, public works director, um, um, other, I guess the library, but that's kind of a different entity as an assistant director, uh, bigger operation there. Um, Anna, can you think of any others? Uh, Police and fire, of course. First well, responders always. Well, the fire departments, the, the chief and the deputy chief, but they're not town employees. They're part right. of um, their fire department organization. Right, right. But are there any other uh, inter um, departments? I don't think so. Okay, thank no. you. Good question. Other questions for Dave's budget? Is if you notice, it's a, it's um, it turns out to be a well, it's a 0.9 percent decrease. Uh, one question. Oh, yeah. one thing for for Dave. And I think this will help moving forward too. Is Dave, you're getting more and more areas to maintain, you know, the public safety building. We're talking about the Darrow's Pond area. I mean, you pretty much go up there and do that anyway. But I think if you could highlight all those additional responsibilities you've gotten as far as the uh, maintaining. And I think most people think it's, uh, you know, you also do the, the garbage on uh, Main Street as well. So, yeah, I think it would really, you know, Cheney Park, uh, the, the bathrooms down there, there's more and more things being added to your plate which I think more than justifies bringing back that fourth full-time maintainer. You're going to have a lot to do. Absolutely. And I, I put together that, I, I, I don't know if I included in my original packet, but I did, um, I, I can certainly send that to everybody, uh, an, uh, a list of all of, all of our responsibilities and the num number of acres that we cut and what those amenities look like in each park. So I can certainly send that out to the, uh, to the board of selectmen uh, tomorrow. Yeah, let's include that in the package going forward. Maybe just naming the parks and um, and then other duties like the garbage pickup and the beach cleanups and all that other stuff. Uh, and, and, um, and I think we cut most of the town buildings too, that, except for the yeah. school. We maintain the town hall, the police department, the new, I would anticipate the new um, public safety complex. Those grounds are all under our um, jurisdiction, municipal parking lots, um, all of those types of things we're cutting and trimming. Dave, also don't forget to mention, although it's only a couple times a 
the year, but Roxbury Road, that's a big area. And you two or three times a season, you do have to go out there and maintain that as well. And we do cut two of the three historical houses. Uh, we cut the Smith Harris property and also the Samuel Smith property. We go up and do that. Oh, wow. Um, the only one we do not do is the Lee, uh, the Lee house. So um, we're, we're, we're cranking for sure. I think that's a good idea to list the town properties that you're responsible yep. for. Perfect. Um, kind of um, I'll send that to you, Sandy, tomorrow, and um, you could forward that on to the um, rest of the board of selectmen. That'd be great. That'd be great. Any other questions? Um, I would just like to point out that um, it, in the, within the budget, the, um, up to you union employees, their wages are not within the um, department. They're currently um, in the contingency area. Once that contract is resolved, we'll be able to um, put it through all the departments. So there's two salary accounts, one for the maintenance workers and one for the administrative staff that, and the 311 accounts, those wages um, would be increased by the, um, the both of that currently in the works. Terrific, thank you. Any other questions on the uh, Parks and Rec budget? Let's no, I, yeah. I, go, number, ahead. go ahead, Rosie. Number 317, number 317, the uniform. Um, I noticed that that is um, more than double from what it was in 2020. Right, and I don't think we were carrying that, Roseanne, in the appropriate line item. So once we once we did that, we moved that into, um, I, I believe it's uniforms and um, so we're, so we went from 1500 to 2000, is that correct? Correct. Yeah. And then, and then, in, and then in 2020, it was 750. Right. Uh, so we weren't carrying it in the in the proper location at 750. I was always having to find that, and uh, finally, in talking to Anna, that we wanted to carry their boots and uh, their $250 clothing allowance was not covered in that in the 2020 account that is now covered. Thank you. Thank you, Roseanne. I'll just point out for the rest, because I know you know better because you've been around. That is a uh, contractual requirement, work boots and, uh, and uh, uniforms. Um, so we have to properly you know, put the right clothes on them for, for safety measures. Um, thank you for that. Any other questions? So it's a, is that just yeah. the full-timers or is that the part-timers as well? No, that's just the full-timers. Just the full-timers yep. under contract. Yep. You probably buy t-shirts or something for the part time. Yeah, for the seasonal like staff, a sweatshirt and two t-shirts for the seasonal guys, but we don't pay for their boots and, and that kind of stuff. So, okay. well, where is the money for the seasonal employees then for the for the uniforms that they get? Yep, that would come out of park and field maintenance. I would take it out of there. Okay, thank you. Dan uh, Cunningham, you had a question? I think. Yeah, I just, on the athletic lighting, I realize that that's reimbursed uh, through fees, but um, it went down about 25%. Is that because the fields are being used less or are we getting some efficiency because um, of LED lighting? Right, so Dan, they're getting used less. So like for an example of girls, uh, you know, girls softball in town has really yeah. not declined recently. So they're, they don't, because even though it's re reimbursable to us, it does, you know, for them, that's still a cost for Little League softball. So they've done away with quite a few night games at that. And then, um, you know, just we're seeing a lot less requests for lights um, from, yeah. the, especially that group. I could, I could tell you, you know, when I first, when I first started years ago, there was probably 10 to 12 um, girls softball teams are probably down to six or seven now. Um, yeah, just you know, lacrosse is taking some of those players away. Uh, I see. People have gone to different sports and and that kind of thing. So that's what we're seeing. Thank you. That explains it. Dave, even though you you see it's going down, you've already expended, if I'm reading it right, uh, eighteen hundred dollars this year. Right. So some of the, some of the utilities we take for from that account to cover a, another utility account in there. So maybe um, I'd have to look at that, Paul, a little bit more, but I think 
the utilities, electricity, sometimes we're a little short in that account. So sometimes we take it from that athletic lighting estimate. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, online, online 2001, the telephones and cable internet, mm -hmm. again, that's a huge jump from where it was in 2020. Um, it's almost triple, I guess better than triple. Yeah. Could you give us a little insight on that? No, Roseanne, I'm going to have to look into that. I, I don't know that offhand. I, I'd hate to answer that and be wrong. So I could certainly get back to you on that. Um, Tell me what line? That big jump there. I, I, I don't know. If, oh, 201. Uh, I see. Yeah, it, yeah. I, I'm not sure, Roseanne. I, I, let me take a look at that, and I'll, I'll respond to Sandy with that and get that information to you guys. I, I'm not. Uh, didn't we kind of spread the? I, I, I could be wrong, but last year didn't we spread the IT upgrade across the, uh, across this kind of spectrum where everybody had to pick up a little bit? I could be wrong, but I know we. I'm wondering. Hey, Joe. Joe Bergard's on the call here getting ready for his big debut. Joe, do you remember anything about uh, breaking up the phone bill or cable and internet bill? Did we move that over to Parks and Rec from your department at one point? You're still muted. I don't believe there was any changes or I don't think we gave Dave any additional costs that I'm aware of. Yeah, the, the only thing we picked up, Anna, if I'm wrong, is a phone for economic development or something along those lines. A while back, but I I, I think they're are they they're no different. longer existence or anything? Yeah. I, that we're we're the Economic Development Commission now. The, the right. most definite is Anna. What are they trending uh, this year? Uh, do you have a thirty five percent of their budget? So they spent between what they about two thousand, including conferences, out of the fifty seven hundred. So there's a little room there. Hmm? There's definitely a little room there. We'll we'll take a look at that. Thanks for pointing that out, Roseanne. Um, but I'll get that, I'll, I'll get that information to you. Okay, great. Any other questions? Thank you, Dave. All right, thank you. I just want one thing I, and I don't want to belabor or, or take up too much time, but um, you know, in our beach pass, fees, uh, we did go up a little bit uh, with our non-seasonal or a non-resident, excuse me, um, on their fees. Looking at, um, looking at minimum wage is as of goes up another dollar August 1st and then goes up another dollar on July 1st of, of next year. And then the following year, it goes up another dollar. So as of uh, 2023, it, it, it'll be at $15 an hour. So just just, you know, we are looking at that. The commission did look at raising uh, some of the non-resident fees and our beach passes for this coming season. And, and so that's the reason, a lot of the reason for that is that increase in minimum wage, so. Rightfully so, keep watching that. And you have a very good commission, uh, uh, better than ever. So uh, I know you guys will keep a, a watchful eye on that. I know the board of selectmen at their next meeting, it's not on the agenda tonight, We'll be talking about Darrow Pond and how your commission would like to start um, the initial planning of what happens to that other 100 acres. And that's come up at your commission. It's going to come up at Board of Selectmen at a future meeting. And thank you for all the work that you, yeah. Tom, and the rest of the commission are doing. Right. What a, yeah, what a great piece of property to put some recreational amenities up there but in a passive nature. I think that's where the commission is going, um, you know, as far as I don't think. Right now, I don't think it's appropriate location for ball fields or anything like that. But as far as disc golf, as far as uh, maybe some BMX biking, as far as you know, nature trails and that kind of stuff, it, it really lends itself to a great recreation. And we don't have anything north of 95. We have no parks in our system north of 95. So this would be a nice, uh, nice addition to a, the parks inventory. And um, we have a committee looking at it, and so. Um, I know we can discuss it at your next meeting or, or for your know. As it comes up, we'll discuss. Yep. Thanks, guys. Correct. If no other questions, we can move on. And I can excuse the two of you. All right. Hallelujah. Good night. Thank you. Take care. Thank you, uh, Diane was on the call. Diane, are you still here anywhere? 
think she thinks that we passed over her in her absence. I didn't get a chance to tell her to stick around. So um, if we don't get that update tonight, we'll get it some other time, and I'll watch for her to come back on. Okay, good. If that's the case, I believe next on the agenda was uh, Public Works and all the Joe Braga Empire. The engineering and the IT, not the IT, but uh, that will come at a different night. So everything but the IT and his empire, building, buildings and uh, all that kind of stuff. So Joe, I'll let you just kind of take control of how you want to present this budget, your budgets. To us. Well, thank you for having me. Um, well, I'd like to stick to the agenda as best as possible because keep everyone sure. um, Bob. So, you know, we'll go from 317 to 105 to 113. The only reason I bring up these is that Anna did mention to me today she uh, or we wanted to go over some of the CNRE items. Of course. Well, so I don't want to forget to discuss those after building me. So. Oh, shoot. We did with uh, with uh, Dave Putnam. We already forgot to bring up his capital. Anna, you were supposed to remind me. Um, Sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, it's okay. So Diane's coming that, back in the Diane, you're back in the room. You just, just hang on, okay? And when we're done with Joe, we'll put you on. Okay, good. All right, Joe, 317. Okay, 317, Public Works Highway Sanitation. Uh, there's a lot of line items in this budget. Um, big picture, it's a, a $3.723 million budget this year. Um, what you're seeing here is a 0.47% decrease. Um, full disclosure, as Anna would say, uh, the UPSU um, raises are not shown in this. That's that's an additional like 30,000. So it, it's like a 0.1% budget increase that I'm proposing here. Um, so I'll just kind of hit some of the highlights going through. Um, <clears throat> the first set of lines, the 100 personal services, the 311 line, the regular payroll, even though UPSU is not showing uh, up here, that would normally in a normal year be zero because the, the general wage increases aren't being shown here. The reason it's showing 2.49% that well, the, the largest majority of that is the fact that I'm not sure if this board remembers, but um, I had 35,000 cut from my 24th employee last year. It was uh, three quarters of my 24th employee um, was to be waited to hire until uh, the last quarter of the year. So I'm bring, trying to bring back to that 24th employee um, so that's why that, that line is showing a little higher um, than what the adopted budget is for this year. Uh, going down to the 200 series contract operations, everything is the same. Just a footnote, the $50,000 for tree maintenance, I mean, it it's, might seem like a lot. Um, we really leveraged or I really worked um, with Eversource. I bet Eversource has cut down about $70,000 with the trees. Uh, for us this year, and I've spent about 35 this year. So trees are a huge issue in this town, and I think we're getting, um, even though there's a lot of them, um, I think we've done a decent job of trying to stay up with with the time. So that 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 line is a very important line. Um, the next set that uh, services, 210 series, 210 services. The um, the scare tipping fee is going down. And the main reason, um, again, one of those full disclosure is um, it's going, it's showing on the, this year's budget 570 and next year's budget 541 because um, we used to get uh, a transportation subsidy from SCARA and now that subsidy is, which it really should be, is now deducted from our bill. So, so our total cost will be less, the billing we get, but we don't get that revenue. Um, so I'll show you where that shows up later. So. Uh, but that line was able to drop um, $29,000. Um, bulky waste is up just a little bit. They're just The trends are that people are going crazy and bringing stuff to transfer stations. So um, all the bulky waste that goes in has to be carted up to Willimantic and we pay on a tipping fee basis. So I want to make sure we cover what, our, um, what we're trending. Uh, fleet maintenance has always been a struggle with um, trying to keep some of the um, well, all the, all the rolling stock that we have in town, especially the garbage trucks and everything like that. And a lot of times there's a lot of big ticket items. So we've been trending at about 225 and each year I've been probably taking 10,000 out of like road reconstruction or some other line. 
So I was trying to properly fund the fleet maintenance line this year. If we continue on the uh, line items in 317. Um, the 300 series operating expenses, um, everything is being proposed is the same. We, we're, we're proposing the same amount. <clears throat> we typically, for store materials is the biggest line there. We typically budget about 2,000 2, tons of salt. And um, that's a good number to use budget. Um, fleet vehicles is an, a big, uh, for, so three t uh, line 310, 221. Um, that's a big, that's a big reduction. And just, just bear in mind that reduction also transcends the Board of Ed and the fire departments. We were able to procure fuel, unleaded fuel, 18% lower than we are this year and 24, diesel 24%. We were able to hop on on the fuel contracts months ago when it was really at its lowest and we're all locked in for next year. So that, that saved the town a lot of money. Um, and, and as I said, that should show up in Board of Ed and the fire departments as well who are in different budgets. Street lights were, um, you've been hearing from me for six years now. This is year six of seven um, where we're paying off, you know, way back seven years ago, we, our, our line item was 205, 210. And we suggested let's go to LED lights, buy our lights out. And uh, we've been paying the last six years or five years, 145,000 of that 210 or 212 is a payment that after year sevens will, will disappear. And then that line should drop down to about 40,000, 45, just when we kind of need it most. So um, I'm trying, I'm holding that line steady because we, you know, two thirds of that line item is for paying off the, um, the, the, the payments on the lights and when we retrofitted it. And um, I oversee the, anytime there's a street light out, they email the town at publicworks at eltownhall.com. Uh, I put them all together. I dispatch the electrician. Um, I follow up with Eversource. So that's how those are done now. And Town Aid Road is, um, is the same. Uh, just the last thing in, in le until you guys have questions, if you do, um, I, I think you're looking at at the bottom of that is the revenues. Uh, on the bottom of that second sheet, if you're looking at the same sheet as I do, which shows that the transportation subsidy disappears. And that's where I, I already told you about it. It's a scare line item that that line went down. Now, the, the two lines don't line up. The, the line went down 29,000 in the expenditures and it, or, and it goes down 40,000 here because they recalculated the transportation subsidy uh, in SCARA. So that's the difference. Um, the tipping fees, the commercial tipping fees, there's a trend in this town where the residential garbage is going up and the commercial garbage is going down. And one of the things that can be, and, and it's good for the businesses in town, but a lot of the businesses are smarting it up and they're, they're, they're asking us for cans themselves. So instead of getting a dumpster, they, they ask us for a can, they have to buy a can for $110 and they roll it out the street each week, week. Um, and they don't have to pay for, once they buy the can, they don't have to pay for the trash. Um, but, you know, if they had that dumpster, they'd be paying a hauling, you know, CWPM or something like that. So, we're, you know, you drive on Main Street um, and Pennsylvania Avenue on their trash day, you, you won't believe how many cans are now out on Main Street. It's, that's the trend. And that's why the commercial trash is going down, in my opinion, because that's your big one of your bigger business centers in town. So um, it gives us less revenue, but, you know, they're taxpayers, too. So uh, we're just trying to balance that. Um, on the, on the positive side, the landfill, um, this board um, approved two different um, hikes in the fees at the transfer station over the last three years. And uh, we've never had more revenue coming in that place. Uh, on three and a half years ago, four years ago, we were taking in about 110,000. We're up to, we're, we're closing in on 200,000 in revenues um, for the bulky waste, brush, and all that kind of stuff. So um, there, we, we've, we've been working on our um, system of tracking we don't take any cash, which comes at a cost as far as credit card fees, but now we don't have $2,000, $2,500 worth of cash sitting in the transfer station. It has to be delivered and hand counted every day at the town hall. So from an efficiency standpoint, that's a lot and, and no, no cash goes um, you know, lost. So that, that, that's the better financial way to do it. So that's expenditures and revenues. If you have any questions on this budget, um, more than willing to answer. Good start. It's a good budget. Thank you, Joe. Are there any questions? Yes, I'm wondering when the policy was changed on picking up uh, commercial waste. Because when we went to the program, uh, commercial businesses were not included 
in the town pickup. They were supposed to pay for their own. Uh, I understand your rationale that they are taxpayers too, uh, but they're certainly different than uh, a residential business. I don't recall. Uh, I don't recall ever voting to uh, approve commercial pickup. Uh, so could you fill us in on that? Well, as best I can answer, because. Um... You know, I've been with the town seven and a half years, and that's that we've been doing. We've been picking up. Um, say, if Dairy Queen wants to have garbage cans, and then they have garbage cans. I, I don't think there's been ever any distinction in the time that I've been here. Um, I know there's some businesses that just bring all their trash directly to the transfer station and don't bypass the pickup. So, I'm not sure if uh, I could look into that, Roseanne. If there was some kind of um, something in the ordinance um, did not allow businesses. Um, but I, I deal with what I deal with. And that's what we, I've always known since I've been here is that some businesses in town choose to go with garbage cans and some use to go with uh, dumpsters. And we just try to make it equitable that if someone tries to go with garbage cans, they have to buy them just like anyone else and they have to roll them out. And we're not going to, we never drive off um, into a commercial parking lot to pick them up unless there's some specific reason that it, it's easier for us to come and do that. But we're not making any special amenities to, if anything, we got rid of car, the cardboard, um, the commercial cardboard. We used to go to the backs of some of these commercial businesses and drive and do hand pickup of their, of their cardboard. We don't do that anymore because that's not, that's not efficient and we don't have those rear loader trucks anymore. So, Thank you. Yeah. I mean, interesting point, Roseanne. And of course uh, you've been here a lot longer than us, but um, uh, I'm wondering, do you know that, other do other towns within Scara also operate like we do? I think they work. Are you asking me? Mark, yeah. Asking, yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. Well, so there's three towns that closely mimic East Lyme, New London and Waterford, well, two, New London, Waterford and us. And by saying that, we're the only ones that have municipal trash pickup as we have our own employees and our own trucks pick up. Everyone else contracts it out. So it, you can't even compare yourself to the other, those other towns that contract it out because they already have private haulers and it's not their business. They just have haulers. So Waterford and the London, I believe are the same way. If, if a business so chooses to get cans, that's, that's their prerogative. Um, and they pick them up, but they have to pick them up on our rules. They have to roll them out to the street on the day that they're collected and our arm picks it up and throws it into the bin. Um, that's, that's how we've been doing it since I've been here. I can certainly ask um, one of them, our employees has obviously been here 47 years. So I can ask Mr. Schultz, um, what the past history is, but that's my understanding is that's we the way we've been doing it um, for a long time. Okay. So is there any limit to the number of trash cans that they can put out as long as they buy them? No, if you go by Cafe Soul and that whole stretch there, um, it'd be hard to find a parking spot on Tuesday morning because there's about 100 feet long of, of cans every five feet. I mean, our, our only our only uh, limitations are you got to buy them, you got to buy the cans, you got to roll them out, and they got to be four feet apart. Um, so, um, you know, that's why I'm saying if you go on garbage day downtown, it, 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 there's a there's a lot of cans out now, and that's just what we're dealing with. What they do. And they've been doing it for quite some time. My business uses cans as well in Waterford. Um, so I, I did know that Waterford um, d does that as well, uh, that I don't have a dumpster. Uh, but I have uh, two cans. And, I, and because of that, the only difference is now someone from your business has to roll them out yeah. on trash day and roll them back in. That's the only thing we ask is they, they can't stay out because there's a, there is an ordinance that you can't leave them out. So that's was kind of the nuisance factor why people went with dumpsters is they didn't want someone to have to roll them out and we're not pandering to anyone of, Oh yeah, we'll, we'll move your cans out. They have to go by the town's rules and bring them out just like everyone else. You know, I, one of the things too is I like this idea very much though, because you're talking about Cafe Soul or uh, Gumdrops and Lollipops for them to, first of all, have the location put a dumpster and the expense. I mean, these are small businesses that have really felt the impact, I'm sure, over the last year of the COVID and that and other times. Um, if there is something that we have to do to address that, as Roseanne said, I think we should, if there is some type of an ordinance, we need to look at uh, addressing that because I'd hate to have to make them go out and get their own dumpsters because that could be 
you know, an overbearing expense on a lot of these. I mean, I, we're not doing it at Costco, I'm, I'm sure, or uh, places like that. So, or stop and shop. Well, cause, cause, well if, if we say, for instance, Costco, they'd have to roll out 100 cans to the street and they would have to run that, that whole stretch is, well, they couldn't even do it because that whole Texas road is not a town, ro to town right, road. Same thing with stop and shop. Yeah. Yeah, they all have dumpsters. All the big ones, all the big restaurants do too. Yes, I mean, Eliano's has their own dumpster yeah. and uh, Rebecca's. Any other questions? Any other issues on this budget? Joe always does a good job of uh, putting a good solid budget together. Of course, we'll add in the, the um, we're, we're near, it's, uh, for, you, for your information and, and all budgets going forward, the UPSU contract, uh, I'm near a negotiated um, settlement to move, extend their contract by one year, because I don't think many, I don't think it's the right atmosphere, the right economic at atmosphere to be negotiating a three year um, um, union contract. So I think in everyone's best interest, the town and the employees and the, the unions and the lawyers um, is to put everybody uh, off for a year and extend their contract. That's what we did um, uh, in, the, in the past. And we're, we're close to doing that. And I'll be bringing that to you um, in, in a future meeting. But I think we have everybody on board. Um, so that's, that's that. So we, um, of course, all the wages, all wage increases are in the wage contingency uh, for the UPSU union, which is town hall and public works employees. And we'll swing that over to the individual budgets uh, at a later date. Any other questions on this budget? Mark, I got a couple. Um, yes. Joe, on line item 10317, the uniform allowance. Um, yep. Then 620, 6, 6250 in 2020, and you've had a allocation of, to get you back to 6250 this year, and you've spent it all. So I know it's only 250, but are you going to need the same amount of money next year, or can you shave no. 250 off? No. What What happened is when when a new employee comes in, they get the uniform allowance, and um, in in fiscal year 1920, we had an employee come in that didn't make it through probation. So we got rid of them and we had already paid them their um, uniform allowance and we brought someone in to fill them up in their place. So we really had a 25th employee, but they never crossed paths. So that's why it was 6250. Okay. And just a general question on, on the um, road work, you know, you've got about $600,000 in this budget between repair and, and the money you get from the state. What do you plan on bonding this year in addition to that 600000 Do we know yet or do we wait for another time? No, no, we do. It's it's in the budget. Um, well, do you want to go over the capital at the end, Joe? Yeah. Is that in the capital? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm just, just to answer this question, I believe it's 500000 and we can go over capital. I don't think Anna was mentioning it to go over the SIP stuff tonight, so that's why I wanted to just answer your question, but I believe it's five hundred. I believe I asked for 500,000. I have a very detailed, uh, um, yeah, 500,000. Oh, I'm sorry, 850. Um, I have a very detailed uh, list of all the roads that we're working on. And so the, um, at the time that the, the Board of Selectmen and the Boards of Finance want to review that, um, they will have a whack at that to see what we want to do. And if that gets, because uh, if you remember last year, we asked for 900, it got cut to 500 and then we cut out Dean Road and Grassy Hill, and then I got questions why we aren't doing Dean Road, and I'm like, because it got cut. So yeah. that's the way a budget works. You, you either put it in and it doesn't get funded, then you don't do it. Right. Yeah. So right now on the uh, road reconstruction and repair, you've, you've spent about 31% of the budget this year and about 50% under the other line item. Do you have enough time in the spring? You know, most of your, most of your weather, your weather, the better weather is summer and, you know, after June, after July 1st, but you look on track to spend uh, the rest of this year's budget. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Paul, that was done um, every year that we have these that I've been doing it. We spend most of our money in the fall in the first half of the year, but uh, made it um, kind of executive decision in the springtime with with, it, with COVID. I had no idea what's going to, was going to impact our, our, uh, our department, let alone the public. So I scaled our work back and we are ready. To, we've already had discussions. They're going to come out in gangbusters 
come um, March, end of March. So uh, we have an extensive list of work that we're going to be doing from end of March to uh, it's a pretty significant amount of work before June 30th of this year. So yes, I fully plan on using that money. Okay. And uh, didn't you submit for several POs to be encumbered today? For yeah, I, I probably work? put in about 130,000 in POs yeah. today. Okay, well, good. Certainly need to keep up with the road. So appreciate it. I think <laughs> that was it. Um, just flip a page here. Yeah, um, you, you already mentioned the, the reason for the decrease in the fuel, but you know, from from twenty to twenty one, we added thirty thousand, and now with the fuel deal, we're taking thirty eight thousand off of last year's budget. So, going in the right direction. Thanks. Yeah. No. The those budgets are really driven by what the cost of fuel is. It's it's hard to look at what past years and past assumptions because it's based on usage and, and what we lock it in for. And we locked it in really good prices here. That's all I had. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Next budget, Joe. Okay. The next one hopefully is a real easy one. Um, Victor Benny, the town engineer, is on, and uh, <laughs> but I, I, so if you have any questions for him, but this this is this is a uh, the engineering budget is like a skeleton budget as far as um, anything on top of people. But I always just like to just touch on who's who, just so everyone remembers. We have a town engineer, uh, Victor Benny. He's on he's on this call. But Victor Victor's in charge of um, runs the payment the payment program, and um, you know and then gets all the reports to hand of all the expenditures, and, and it's pretty extensive. I I I'm very proud of the department of all that we've done over the last four or five years in the road, you drive around this, this, this town and I think we're in pretty good shape just because we keep an after it. And that's done by our staff, everything's done internally. So, um, and then Victor does all the permitting stuff. So Victor is a town engineer, civil engineer one is a um, gentleman, Peter Gilberto, um, obviously with the um, uh, purchasing policy and just in general, having to put things out, all the plans out, we have to do all the surveying work and we have to do all our plans in house doing any of the kind of support with uh, all the GIS or just any of the other stuff that um, has to be done. Uh, Peter's the one that puts that together. The administrative assistant, uh, Marilyn Wright is, is our assistant. Um, just so everyone knows, she, she does 25% um, of her budget, uh, her salary is allocated to the water department because she does all the bills for the water department. Um, so, that, so that's the staffing. And then stormwater management is just um, the uh, permitting that's required of us of deep, deep as far as all the, the sampling that required for all our general permits. Um, and then dues, you know, we do have um, the dues for the um, Bill Shears, a licensed land surveyor, and the, uh, we have Victor and Bill and I are um, professional engineers. So there's uh, dues for um, the uh, licenses. And that's about it in the budget if anyone has any questions. Any technical questions for Victor Benny while he's here? Try to stump the engineer. Dago, you could do a good job of that. If Mr. Sorn. Well, but it's a, it's a personal question based on a road I live on, and I'll leave that for a later date. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's on the list, and we, we can talk. Good one, Paul. <laughs> I know where you live. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a tiny little road, isn't it? Hard path. Um, any any questions at all on the engineering budget? Budget. It's pretty straightforward. It's one of those budgets that we probably wouldn't have reviewed if Joe wasn't here already. Anyway, so we bring it in. It's under his umbrella. Uh, Joe, what's next? Roseanne, have something? Oh no. Okay. No. Um, yeah. The next one is uh, building maintenance department one thirteen. All right, so this one this one gets um, a little confusing, but I'll I'll try to simplify it as best as possible. And the reason being is that um, of the um, the new public safety building. So if you look at the budget sheet, the expended the, um, that you guys have in front of you, the, all the line items, and at the bottom, it shows a ten. Um, if I'm looking at the right sheet, it shows a ten point eight five. 10.85% increase. Right. That's a little um, deceptive, and I want to make sure Board of Selectmen and Board of Fires understand that. Because la this current year's budget, this board 
Um, we originally put in contingency and I, I put together a number, I think it was like $84,000 for this board for the last budget cycle. That's this current year. And um, the board of selectmen cut it back to 58,000 and put that 58,000 in contingency. So that 58,000 is in this budget for the public safety building that was not in my budget last year, this current year. So now if you roll the 58,000 from contingency on top of that, this budget is really only up $18,000. So um, I understand from a percentage standpoint, but it's an important thing. And I'll show you where those monies have been brought in from the, from the contingency and, and everything is kind of lining up with what I said last year. So custodians, um, that, that is unto itself. We're taking over a building that I believe is 30,000 total and 15,000 on the first floor. And now we have, the fire marshal going to be upstairs for um, some potentially not a lot. Be upstairs. <laughs> What's that? Potentially. Okay. Still, I, still wait for a cost and that hasn't been approved yet, but it's okay. Thanks for letting me know that. Cause that, um, but anyways, 15,000. So you can't just add, and then the other question that I'm sure will be mentioned is that, well, we already have an existing police department and we already have a pub, um, uh, a dispatch center. So now that we have a new building, why do you need more staff? Well, um, the, the exist, as everyone knows, the existing police station is not a very good building. And on top of that, a few years ago, we've had some cutbacks in the building maintenance. So we're struggling as is to maintain and clean these buildings. So I didn't want to start moving into this new building and having the police and the dispatch of uh, the emergency management move into this new building without having a good plan in place. So I believe you guys have in your package, I'd like to refer to a a matrix for a current custodial coverage, and then a one that says a proposed custodial coverage. Is, do, you, do you guys have that in your package in, yes. this, in this department? Yes. I'd like to just give a highlight. I'm not going to go over every like you know hour that someone works, but just a, a highlight of what's happening is on the first one that says current custodial coverage, the buildings that we're maintaining right now, by maintaining is cleaning, um, town hall, probate, the existing PDM Main Street, the community center, uh, the Dispatch and Emergency Management at 171 Boston Post Road in the Field Services Building. If you look at Dispatch and Emergency Management, the, the bottom two buildings, we have like maybe three hours of coverage um, at the Dispatch and four hours of coverage at the FSB. Um, I have between Parks and Rec and Highway, I have about 30 people at the Field Services Building and we have four hours of cleaning services dedicated to them. Um, so I'm struggling right now and actually pulling custodians out of the community center because that building isn't being used that as much because it's not, the public isn't coming in it, but that's one of the areas. Plus, if you also look at the, poli the existing police station, we, we have one and a half hours on Monday, one and a half hours on Tuesday, one and a half hours on Wednesday, and one and a half hours on Friday. So we have six hours of coverage for that whole building. Six hours of coverage is not going to work for a 15,000 square foot building. And just put it in perspective, the town hall is 18,000 square feet. So the, the, the space at the, the usable space, or I should say that the space to be used at the new public safety building is give or take about the same size as town hall, just a touch under. And um, so right now uh, we have for staff, we have Ron Benz, our building supervisor, and he's, he's really in charge of any, anything that comes up during the day, coordinating any kind of work, building maintenance, all that kind of stuff. He's a supervisor of the custodians. And then I have a custodian for the town hall that also splits time as it shows here at the pr probate and at the police station. And I have a daytime and a nighttime um, custodian at the community center. And then I have an 11 hour um, fill in. So if you flip to the other side, which I believe is a color sheet, part, part, um, apologize for doing color, but I, our price on color copies is much better now. So I feel better making have these copies. But this, what we're proposing here is to drop the hours of town hall, of the town hall person from 40 to 32, but to bring in a full time. So there is one more full time person, but we're dropping the 11 hour part time position. So in total, to bring on that building, I'm, I'm, I'm increasing the number of hours by 19 hours, which I think is a reasonable proposal. And if anything, it's certainly not. Um, uh, overly ambitious as far as extra help um, because this, what I'm proposing gives just enough if everyone shows up. 
So if you have someone that goes up for out for a week, I do have five thousand dollars in this budget for cover it for um, for uh, uh, pick up uh, so that coverage. The problem is it's really hard to get good people to do to to fill do fill-ins when you don't give them any hours uh, or don't give them any random hours. So this is basically in a nutshell what I'm proposing that shows up as the 222.180 on on your budget sheet is I'm proposing a full-time person. So we actually have five full-time people instead of four. But right now I have a part-time person that's 11 hours and I'm cutting one of my full-time people. So um, I'm very specific and you certainly can look at it. You can ask me questions now, but I try to really give a really good detailed synopsis of how I believe that we're gonna to try to cover these buildings from a cleaning perspective. Do, um, do you want me to just go over the rest of the budget? Or does anyone have questions about the custodial coverage? We've had a lot of discussions about this and I'm moving the chess pieces around. And what we don't want to do is, is um, be accused of not maintaining our buildings. Uh, that's very important, especially as we move into a brand new building um, being used, about 60% of it being used. Um, uh, you, we want it to look nice and be nice and look like new for a long time. Um, obviously our current police building and our, our dispatch center, which is decades old, um, have seen, uh, seen its better days. They've seen their better days. So um, Mark, I, I, I think comment you, on it. Um, I think you did a good job of uh, spreading out the man hours and not, not just bumping them up. Um, really nilly. Go ahead, uh, Paul. Uh, I, I think this is, is I'm going to say you're going to be challenged in my opinion with the public safety building with locker rooms, showers, a, a fitness area, the cells. Uh, if there's someone in the cells, does it need to be, you know, especially in time of COVID wiped down? Don't know if that'll be your staff, the custodial staff or the police staff. So I appreciate you looking to try and get this done with only 19 more hours, but it's something I think depending on how things go, uh, through this first year, you may be dipping into that $5,000 uh, to be able to cover it. So, uh. well, I do appreciate that. And I have, was having a conversation with my bill. When I was putting this budget together, I didn't know all the specifics of, I mean, we don't, we never had to clean a building like this. And with the, with, you know, no, we don't have any more lockers. I would just ask the question today about, well, if you, if you have a mess in the jail, what do you do? And I, I, I honestly, so I did the best I could with the limited resources that we haven't moved into this building yet, but that's something that we're going to have to take into account um, because that $5,000 will go is really not meant for backing up the public safety building. That's meant for, you know, the guy, the person um, at the community center is on vacation for two weeks and I need someone to back it up. It's not like a covering a day. So um, that's something that we probably should have extended coverage. I was going to have a meeting with Mike Finkelstein to have a, have a better understanding of what their expectations were, but yeah, I don't recall the number of hours that we've we've had, you know, people held in Waterford, but you know they're they're not held usually that long. But uh, depending on the number of people coming in and out of those cells, uh, this is an area we'll have, you have to keep an eye on. We may have to make an adjustment after we get up and running for a little bit. Good point, Paul. Paul with uh, a lot of time, if it's a hazmat type thing where you have, here again, you sometimes you'll have a prisoner, you know, hurled. Yep. Feces, you know, that does happen. It's pretty much, and I'm sure Waterford has the same thing. Those are almost always you will call service master to come in to do a decontamination. Of course, now, you know, it'd be a good thing to see what Waterford's protocol is. I'm sure the chief's already looking into that. But anytime there's any type of a hazardous bodily fluid or material, you would contact a service master uh, to come in and, and sanitize that. But I, I agree with uh, Paul, Joe, six and a half hours in that public safety complex. I mean, that's, you here again, it's a, we're, our, we're probably going to have a decent facility for our first responders of police and dispatch, you know, and I'd rather be, you know, I don't want to be penny wise and pound foolish. So I think six and a half is great. I mean, that's pretty much good, but you know, there might be times when, especially if you have a prisoner overnight and you take them to court in the morning, uh, you might want, not want to wait until uh, the two o'clock in the afternoon to have the uh, cell sanitized. But that's a, a conversation as you already said, you'll have with the chief. So. And ironically, the, the, the one and a half is for the, to cover the 30 employees that are FSB. So um, 
I'm, I'm, I certainly could ask more employees and we can certainly do that. I mean, I'm trying not to slug the budget, but it is going to be uh, once we get in there and even the timing, this budget is based on them moving in in August. Um, so if they move in earlier than that, then this budget is not covered that. So keep that in mind. Yeah. Yeah. And I can tell you for 28 and a half years of experience, police officers aren't really all that good about picking up after them. So I'll just keep moving in with the different lineups because most of them are pretty similar, except for the money that I pulled from my original estimate that went into contingency, um, put 3000 extra into service contracts. Cause we're going to, once we fall, uh, actually move in there, we, we, we should have HVAC contracts and, um, and pest control. Um, but we did add that to this year. Building maintenance, I added 5,000 for that, just to bring in on that building. Um, and then custodial supplies uh, down in the 300s went from 1605 to 21. So um, I put in 5,000 for that. I, I am gonna be keeping an eye on um, expenditures in this line item this year. And if, if we do have some extra, I'll be working with the director of finance and the first selectman to see if we have to, if we can buy some va um, larger vacuums or whatever, some of the stuff this year to, in, in advance of that, but um, I, I, again, I don't know how, we've never staffed a building to this size. So, you know, I, I threw numbers at it as best we could, but, um, you know, I'm trying to be also reasonable so that, um, I mean, it was already showing a 11% increase. Um, the uh, telephones are the same. Um, electricity, uh, the 260, uh, I don't know if you guys have it in your packet. If you don't, I, I definitely gave it to the director of finance, uh, to Anna, but, um, I, I didn't just willy nilly the 260. Again, it's really hard to figure out, but you know, um, what, what that building that's a 24 seven operation and with dispatch with all the equipment, they use more, but, um, it's, I, I, I definitely dropped the, 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 the electricity at the existing PD once they move out and at the existing dispatch, although there is still going to be equipment there. So I, I really don't want to drop that 260 number down. I, I think that's a, a good estimate. And I, and I gave that to, uh, to Mark and Anna. And I also increased the propane. The, the reason I didn't um, increase it significantly is because of our excellent propane contracts that we have for next year. Um, you know, this year we're only paying a dollar four for propane, which is phenomenal. Um, next year we're locked in at 111. So that allows me to to minimize that that increase in that line item and still be comfortable that we can bring in all the other buildings with that. So that's pretty much it with Billy Maintenance. If you have any other questions as part of the rest of the budget. Dan? Uh, no, I just, you know, I, I, I think we fully understand that it's, it's there's gonna be a cost associated uh, with uh, custodial care of the public safety complex. And it, there's gonna be a learning curve and experience curve. And I think that we have to understand that in the future, those numbers uh, could change. And it, it's important to do a good job of taking care of that building. Um, we certainly don't wanna be criticized for, for not doing the job right over there. So I fully support uh, those expenses. And if they go up, the, then that's something we just have to deal with. I think it's something like this that we need to take into consideration when we look at the contingency fund um, for, uh, as because as Joe said, it's very difficult for any of us to really envision when they're going to when they're going to move in. It may be August, it may be earlier, but I think that uh, Joe's done his best to estimate what it could be, and I just think we need to be uh, take that into consideration when we discuss um, the amount of money we're gonna put into contingency. It's a good point, Roseanne. We've, our budgets have gotten tighter and tighter over the last bunch of years. And when we come up, and, and, and we've had situations like this where we've really had to make some guesses, but we guess conservatively, but then leave ourselves a cushion and contingency. So the money doesn't just get spent in a budget, not to accuse uh, Mr. Bergar of ever doing that anyway. Um, he wouldn't, but it gives us a better chance of managing um, fiscally through the, through the process. Um, and that, that, as we know, because we see the requests, that those contingency items um, that come before us are, um, are safety nets. Um, it's a safety net for us 
as we do this process. But we have tight budgets. We'll keep it a tight budget. We'll do some learning over this year as we open up the, the, uh, the public safety building and, and discover what it takes to uh, maintain a 24-hour building with three or four departments under one roof. It'll be very interesting. Any other items, any other issues, questions? Good, Joe. Uh, Diane, we'll get to you in just a second. Joe, we want you to go over your um, capital items while you're here. Um, we'll review the whole capital budget toward the end of our uh, discussion, I think the beginning of March. But while you're here, you may want to explain what your requests are. Yeah, I don't know the, I don't know the budget number, but Anna gave me sheet. Four yeah. is that? Yeah, that's that, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 724. Yeah, yeah, 724. There's a, there's a work there's a worksheet in 724 that the, the total at the bottom is 683.113. So the ones that um, I have um, oversight on, the first one, the Cadet CAD software and equipment, that's a running CNRE. It's a bucket of money to pay uh, for equipment. We, our uh, plotter, which is going to cost about 10, 11,000, all the apartments in town all use is very old. Um, it's coming due and plus um, survey equipment because as we say, all, all, all the products we do in-house are done with um, our own survey equipment. So that's a bucket we've been um, funding each year. Town projects, the roofs, uh, Anna has listed the, uh, the current balance of 46. Um, don't forget um, the Eastland Community Center, which has already had its 30th anniversary. Um, that roof really hasn't been done. Um, so we're gonna have to start doing that in stages at some point soon. Um, so the more we can put in that. So I would highly recommend keeping that 10,000. Um, the HVAC replacement, any system could, could cost $10,000 on a snap of a finger. I have an issue right now at the dispatch um, that could cost seven, $8,000 up at the existing dispatch. And, and there's still gonna be equipment up there. So we, um, I haven't um, pulled the trigger on it yet, but um, that, that line is very important. And we don't have a lot in the balance. We have 17,000. So that's a line, so I don't have to keep coming to the board asking for money anytime something breaks. Um, the sidewalks, ten thousand dollars is, is probably gets you about hundred feet. Um, so um, even though we do have a balance of one fifteen uh, coming from Gateway, I have some locations that not only we look into repair sidewalks, but also um, I was kind of looking at the Boston Post Road area of, in, in um, Chesterfield up by the high school, trying to infill some areas so you know with students walking around and some of the businesses up there so that 10,000 would be uh, important to keep townwide servers is another bucket of money um uh tell you, town hall servers is a bucket of money we put aside just so um and i'm anna would know better as far as how much oh okay the balance sorry the balance right there we're putting that money in there so when the servers do come due the money is there and uh, it was a few years ago that the servers um, uh, conked out. And so that money is pretty important to keep funding. Um, the, the engineering vehicle acquisition, that was from 1819. So that's just a payment. Um, the technology upgrade, upgrade the 10,000 um, under town computer equipment. Every year we, we put in 10,000, we replace about 13 or 14 computers and uh, they run in age. Um, we go about six years with our computers, five, six years. If there's certain department heads or certain uh, high functioning, um, uh, everyone's high functioning, but if, if there's people that really need higher demands, uh, we, we, we try to change those out sooner than normal. Uh, but that's about the schedule, about five, six years. Uh, Parks and Rec is not me. Town Rec here is not me. Fire, Flanders Fire Department, luckily, uh, none of these, please. The only one is at the bottom is um, trucks acquisition program. And what this is, is, and it's over on the, uh, it's over on the far right. It said total vehicle, uh, total is 429,500. And that is proposing to buy, to buy a new garbage truck. So this is the, this is the fourth year or we haven't had a garbage truck in I believe three or four years. I the one we're replacing is our oldest one. Um, it's two thousand. It's a it's a twelve year old truck, and it's pretty much had it. And also a dump truck for one hundred thirty five. So the the dump truck, uh, the the garbage truck and dump truck total four hundred twenty five thousand. Um, there must be some financing in there too. That's what the the four twenty nine five hundred is. 
Oh boy. That's that's and, and then we have we have the uh we have the payment plan, but that's in capital. That's something that, that's that's something different than this sheet. Does anyone have any questions? I have a question. Who's calling Roseanne? Because I'm talking. <laughs> you know what? I can't get it to hang up. I was going to mute you, Roseanne, but then I think you'd have difficulty unmuting yourself. I don't know if you know how to do that. So I chose not I to. I do. Okay. It's well, one of the few things I do know. <laughs> I, I, it's okay. It's just us. And, you know, we're, we're, we have the uh, paperwork in front of us. Bottom line is Joe's going to be needing a new a trash truck, right? And and what was the other one? A, a, a pickup? A dump truck? No, it's, it's a dump truck. I was yeah. trying to get a dump truck last year, but I we at the uh, la late the eleventh hour we switched it to a pickup truck. It's one of these midsize. Uh, we also we use it we use it all year long. We use it in the summer. We use it in the winter. It's a um, small. It's, truck. it's the midsize truck. It's twenty five yeah. nine, so it's not a CDL truck, but it's 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 the mid grade size truck. There you go. Any questions? I mean, we'll be reviewing the capital, but it's always good to have uh, Joe as, as he kind of responsible for many of the items here. Uh, if you have any questions. If not, Joe, I just want to know that, you know, you, you've staged yourself quite nicely with that background curtain. Did that, did that come out of town funds or? No. <laughs> well, I have it shipped so you don't see my bed <laughs> in this oh. back. It's You're not at the yoga studio either. You're okay. I'm um, um, I'm in my room. I've been the rest of us room. don't know. We don't have such fancy backgrounds. You look like you're doing a stage production there. I could so maybe some colored up lighting um, in the back. Good for you, Joe. Thank you once again. You know, in the, in the 20 minutes you spend with us, you know, that probably equals more than 20 hours of putting the budget together, probably uh, 20 days worth of putting the budget together. It's not easy and every year it's a new challenge. So I appreciate uh, all that you do. Um, and um, we are very, very lucky. I mean, this is a, you have some, you know, obviously your public works budget is a huge nut. Would you say 3 million and change, right? So, um, I mean, with the, in the wrong hands, that, that budget could go out of control very quickly. So. Thank you, Joe. Once again, as, as long as I've been sitting here, my seven budgets, you've brought in um, a very, very flat line budget. budget. We much appreciate it. Um, I, I, my only regret is the next first selectman is going to take advantage of those LED lights. And, and the budget's going to, there's going to be a credit there where your budget item goes down and they're going to be like, oh, that was nice of Nickerson to do that. Uh, and um, um, our next budget's going to, Got to show that. That's going to be nice. Not I got to tell you, I'm shocked that it's been six years. Uh, that I, took me back. Right. I know. Yeah. I, After was we, kid, I was just a kid when we started doing it. <laughs> <laughs> After we did it, Waterford jumped on board and all the other, Montfield yeah, jumped on board after we did it. We were um, in front of that. Joe was in front of that. I just tag along. Thank you, Joe. Yep. Much appreciated. But Diane... Anyway. Vitaliano. Diane is our very able, um, and you're going to have to mute, unmute yourself. There you go. Um, is our very able town assessor. She's one of the um, lowest paid assessors in the state of Connecticut, we found out. Uh, we'll have a discussion about that in a future meeting. Um, but uh, Diane works tirelessly with a staff that's probably the, one of the smallest staffs in the state of Connecticut. Um, these days about one and a half people along with uh, herself and uh, and a very complicated budget. We're a town with, you know, big box store and, and loads and loads of open space and protected space and forestry space. And, and then of course, uh, great, great dynamic neighborhoods and, um, and dynamic commercial zones as well, like Main Street. So Diane, you, uh, you promised you'd be under 10 minutes, but you just wanted to give us a little update on the grand list because you, uh, you've made an announcement that you've released our grand list and it's a, it's a big deal. Yes, I'm very excited about it. And so I will heed that warning to keep my enthusiasm down to 10 minutes. <laughs> I know. I think you had originally even tried to work me down to five. Uh, but at any rate, <laughs> It's um, it's wonderful news. Um, it's the grand list is up 2.14 percent 
Um, and if you look back on the history of um, the increases, we have to go back pretty far before we can see such a large increase. Uh, we had um, our motor vehicle list. Our motor vehicle list was up 7.76%, uh, which for a year of COVID when DMV was closed for quite a long time is, is really something. Um, that's uh, a number of things go into that. Um, if you've driven around town recently, you notice that um, the cars on the road are more expensive. We have um, a lot of a lot of nice cars on on, on the road these days, um, and uh, they also um, uh, the um, used car prices have also risen. And in addition to those factors. We also, um, a few years ago, I um, started using another program that allowed me to build a database to help price all of the unpriced motor vehicles, because a lot of people don't realize that we get um, just cabs and chassis, and we don't know what's on the back end. Um, so we've gotten very adept at pricing those back ends and um, using the database to help us price the trailers. And also, we had um, a lot of RVs uh, that um, are, are on the list now, and people were buying expensive RVs, which was really nice. So to have the motor vehicle list up 7.76% was, was wonderful. Um, and then we move on to personal property, and personal property is up 14.36%, which as personal property goes, um, it's always a depreciation schedule. So often it's very difficult for the personal property list to go up in value because as time goes on, everything goes down. Um, but we had um, CLMP, um, they, they were up, they're still the number one taxpayer. Um, and um, then in addition to that, we, we did have Comcast. Um, and Comcast uh, spent uh, a few a few million dollars in town, which was nice. And uh, we also had the um, Costco's come on full board, so the personal property for both the store and the gas station, uh, which which was wonderful. So all those things led to the um, personal property being up. And um, the personal property was <clears throat> up about um, $8 million, $8.9 million. The real estate was up $27 million, um, which is just, you know, so wonderful. Um, we had, um, again, the, the Costco come on and um, the Costco gas station. We had, that's only with um, the Cove up at Gateway being 52% complete. It had to use an under construction code of 52% as of October 1. So we're going to see um, more uh, uh, higher numbers for that come in uh, next year. Um, and th those were all such exciting projects. Um, we also had um, another Dollar General. We had all those storage units come on. Um, we had a new cell tower. We had um, many, many teardowns down um, at the shore and lots and lots of building permits. So all in all, it has been really a really exciting year despite all of um, the adversities we've had. Uh, it, it, it's been very exciting. So I'm very happy that I've been able to be a, a big part of it. And I just love the way that the town is growing and looks these days. It, it, I'm so proud to, to be a part of it. Okay, did I do it? <laughs> right. um, you have one minute to spare. So you've left one minute for questions. Yes. Um, and, and that's all. So if the question runs a minute, you can't answer it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Diane, um, well, g gentlemen and ladies, are there any questions? Um, Seeing that, Diane, you do a great job. I think it's just, um, you know, yes, we saw our economy in spite of the COVID uh, situation. Uh, boom, we had more building permits downstairs than ever. They say in our history of our town, it was absolutely insane. Uh, um, 
the number of people coming in and renovating their homes, but then you have the the um, the apartments on, along the highway there, the gateway apartments and, and the new development. As you said, we're only getting fifty percent of the tax there, and then we get, we take advantage of Costco being fully open now, and 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 mm -hmm. but Guys Oil and the this new yep. storage units down uh, at Liberty Way, and um, and we can keep on adding up these little projects that are adding up to mm -hmm. a whole lot. I mean, even on, on Industrial Park Road, we took full advantage this year of the uh, the building supply company that went in. Um, oh, yeah. We, uh, absolutely. Um, yeah, so lots happening. So 2.14 increase. And the reason why I wanted to put Diane up in front of the budget discussions, as we have several books, is for you to keep that in mind that we do have a, a boost in our revenue. And while we do have, you know, we always want to watch every nickel and dime we spend, we got to remember that not all of it's going to come from necessarily the taxpayer who's going to see a mill rate increase. It, there's also going to be... Um, revenue coming in from a grand list uh, re evaluation, if you will, an increase in the grand list um, with all these new taxpayers. So very important that we had uh, Diane come in just to give you the flavor of the economy. It's not all doom and gloom and we can watch the news and read the paper and, and even know people that have businesses that are not in a great place, but f overall the economy and the state of um, the economy in general for people and the people that own property um, is pretty good. Um, lots of people investing in our, in our town. So very good, Diane. Thank you for your great service to our town. You, you are awesome. Um, and, um, and, and these, these selectmen need to know that. Thank you. All right. Now so, in your just, budget, what, one thing I, I am going to do is put in a, um, uh, put in a request to have you have a nicer background. So you're going to get the joke <laughs> of curtain, okay? It'll be a shower curtain the first year, but it will be a curtain. Was there another question? So what I wanted to say is um, when we get to this point, it, it, you know, like in the budgets, you know, the, new, the proposed budget cycle, I always go to um, Diane because I want to know what the grand list growth is so that I can see how, mu how much additional dollars the, the grand list growth is going to bring. And this year it's over $1.3 million. Um, the range of what the grand list growth has brought in in previous years has been like between let's say three and six, maybe 700,000. So this is really um, like when I, when I took a look at that, I was like, like the big wow for me, the 1.3 million. <laughs> I just wanted hey, to say that. When, when Anna's smiling, I know it's a good day. <laughs> when the finance lady and the assessor, uh, and presumably the tax collector, they're all smiling. Um, so we've done good. We've done good by our town. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you. Diane, for jumping on. And sorry, uh, you missed the beginning of the meeting. You know, yeah. you lose, you lose, babe. I, I had um, some technical difficulties, okay. but I finally got a computer that actually worked. <laughs> okay. You have a good rest of your night. Enjoy your family. You. I'll see you in the morning. All right. Take care. Um, next up is, and we can move quickly through the next couple budgets, services to the community. 115 is the budget. That's where we make our donations and our, um, our give back to the community at large, some of it not necessarily in our town, but in our, in the general regional community, uh, you'll see that we um, have restored all the funding this year, um, uh, where we cut several pieces la out last year. You heard from Mr. Peck uh, from their, uh, the, the, the Lee house. Uh, we had cut them down to uh, $250 from uh, over 2000 we restored that money we didn't um, want to lose we put placeholders in many of those uh, categories and some we left at zero but we brought back um, and I just um, I just wanted to point that out that was a one-time situation we didn't um, diminish our the value of these organizations to our community and how important they were we were in the middle of a pandemic and we were um, we were looking for every nickel and every dime that we could to survive one year. That's all. Um, so um, enough said on that. We did add 
the Southeastern Connecticut Cultural Coalition, $500 there, the Arts and Culture Coalition, they are working with our Main Street group to create a, um, our downtown is an arts designation, um, uh, destination and designation. Uh, I'm working with them on that, but they are a regional outfit that gets most of their funding through state grants, but you know how that's going these days. They're asking for all the towns in our COG to, to come up with some funding. We, uh, we didn't, I don't think we matched what they were asking for, but we are giving them a nominal fee of $500. And we, I ask your uh, blessing on that as well. Are there any questions? Yes, I was wondering if we had received any additional requests, any additional letters requesting funding? Not over my desk. Um, the, you know, many of these organizations ask for more money than we're giving them. Um, uh, you know, the homeless uh, hospitality center in New London is, would, would gladly take 20 thousand uh, dollars we're giving them three but there's another group that's always asking for which group is that Anna that's always asking for um, UCFS they're in as Family Service Association yes Family Service Association we give them sixty three hundred dollars and they're um, looking for a whole lot more than that but that's been a constant uh, give and um, we've been maintaining that line which is a significant give back. Um, it's the largest by twice as much uh, than any other organization. Do you know of any, Roseanne? No, I don't, but I know um, that uh, we oftentimes do get letters or requests from um, different organizations that we don't annually fund. So I was just curious if we had received any additional requests that weren't reflected here. Yeah, no, um, the Cultural Co Coalition is the additional one, and we did choose to fund them based on all the hard work they're doing in our region. Um, and uh, we can't just be nickels and dimes and pavement and buildings and, and HVAC systems. Uh, art and culture is probably a, a very important part of uh, us feeling human, especially coming out of, out of this, so I chose to also fund them. They're a great group. Uh, Wendy Burry, B-U-R-Y, is the coordinator. And um, you may have seen her or heard her in other venues. Uh, she's terrific. So, good question. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Anything else from anyone else? Okay. Great. And, and I'm glad to we can, we can move that back. My, my budget, well, my budget, the first selectman's budget, um, is 101. I don't know if it needs much in the way of review. Our executive assistant is an unaffiliated. Am I right on that? Yes. And um, and I and the first selectman is as well. So those budgets. That's a that's a final budget. There'll be no wage increases included later on this and basically it's wage increases that are driving that. Um, any questions on the first selectman budget? No need to prolong it. I think uh, there we go. And the last budget then is the general government budget. Slow me down if you have questions. But general government comes in at 114, am I right? Yes. And this is where Anna takes over. <laughs> it's a big budget. It's it's a significant budget because it has all the, um, well, health care, health insurance, and pension, and and, and and all that, and workman's comp, and insurance, lawyers, etc. So um, everything is laid out, and we, you know, we, sometimes it's a fluid number right up until the time we kind of finalize the budget at, uh, you know, at the, beginning, at the end of April with the Board of Finance because the health insurance numbers are coming in and they tend to continue to come in. And, and sometimes the, uh, the liability insurance is renewing and might change. But Anna, bring us up to speed. Where are we on this? Uh, obviously, it's a little bit of an increase. We have a 3%, 3.81% increase in the to total bottom line. 
Yeah, so um, in terms of the health insurance, um, right now we're running with um, an estimated 8% increase. Um, I do believe that's um, probably on the high side. The, uh, the state is expected, uh, typically sometime in the month of February, they, they release their actual rates. Um, we do have some concern because um, that state plan has been running in a deficit and there's going to be some point where they're just going to have a large increase. But what they started doing, I believe this is the first fiscal year, in addition to an overall general increase for the plan, they have regional increases. Like I think um, for, for us this year, it was an additional in, in this area, it was additional one and one half percent to what their base um, rate increases. So as I said, um, we are carrying it at 8% and um, we're hopeful that um, sometime before the end of the month, we may get an update and may be able to um, make a reduction there. Our workers comp and uh, li uh, prop liability coverages, we're um, expecting a 3% increase in each of those. On the workers comp, even though we had a 3% budget, uh, are expecting a 3% increase. Um, our estimate this year was a little on the high side, so it's, it ends up being um, um, budget, budget neutral there. Um, our um, pension funding, that went down a little bit. Um, that fluctuates with um, how the investments in our portfolio do. So um, the prior year, we took um, a big hit and so this year um, we're able to, um, you know, make a little bit of a reduction there. Um, we've been funding a retirement liability. As you know, we've talked about having an aging workforce and, you know, that's been very helpful when we've had to do, um, do payouts. So we're recommending keeping that in. For the legal services, we did add, if you look all the way at the, at, to the bottom in that area, we added $25,000 for police accreditation. Um, we're, we're going to need to, um, you know, establish um, procedures. And um, so uh, uh, Chief Finkelstein um, had mentioned uh, an attorney firm that specializes in this and the price that they gave him to do this work is $25,000. Perhaps when um, the police come before you, um, we can ask the chief if uh, we had asked him to look into seeing if that cost could be spread over more than one year. So, uh, you know, I did ask him to look into that. He hasn't gotten back to me yet. And all the other legal accounts, I do, I mean, I have a, I do a 10 year history. I look at them and, you know, try to do the, the best, um, you know, to come up with an estimate. For Labor Town and Labor Public Safety, in the upcoming fiscal year, we will be um, having to negotiate new contracts with all of our bargaining groups. So um, that's kind of why um, we uh, increase those a little bit. Unemployment, we've been holding the line with, um, you know, with the $10,000 there. We did have a little bit of a spike over the last year. Um, in that area, we've been managing with the ten thousand um, dollar, the ten thousand dollar budget, and then the others. There's nothing, um, you, you know. There's um, dues and some professional management training for, you know, for townwide. Um, that's pretty much about it. I don't know if anyone has any specific questions on any of the items. And just one thing you might mention when they talk about the pension is, you know, I'm sure the question is, are we funding enough? And one of the things that when I have done the pension committee a couple of times, we are well above almost every, almost all the municipalities and towns with the fund, the manner in which we fund our pension account. We're in really good shape. Right. So every year we have um, an actuarial valuation done on the plan and it looks at you know, um, all of our active members and where they are in their, um, you know, uh, working careers. And they do projections for what we have to have in the plan in order to fun fund the future benefits. And they come up with um, an annual required contribution. And we do 
always make our annual required contribution. That's very, um, very important. And we're, you know, in the 80% uh, uh, range funded, so. Which is the right number to be at. Yeah, which is, you know, there are towns that uh, are down in the 40% or yeah. we all know where the state got themselves in trouble over decades as well, so. You know. cities, cities in the state are, are typically very, very low and they are in trouble. <clears throat> Those are the ones we read about needing bailouts. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Any other questions? Yeah, Anna, um, yeah. line item 128. Um, the uh, expenditure for the year analysis showed a budget line item of 218,000. Um, Place the 125. Right. So the reason for that is if, if you remember at the end of every fiscal year, I come to the boards and I ask to carry over whatever the remaining balance is just to kind of, um, to kind of build it up. Okay. Um, and um, Inland Wetlands Agency, seeing as we will be getting some uh, legal costs associated with their recent ruling, uh, which line item did I fall under? Does it fall under planning for legal? Uh, 238 conservation. Conservation, okay. And you increased that by 2,000. Okay, good. Um, and I did notice that we've are already transferred this year $16,000 um, into the, the labor line item. And we took 9,000 from general government and 7,000 from town, town labor. Uh, and you're keeping, and you did decrease general uh, by twenty five thousand, so you cover that. And uh, but um, uh, on the town labor, uh, you went up two thousand from last year's budget, but we actually transferred seven thousand out to go into labor PS. So That's public safety. Yeah. So. Uh, I don't know, you know, I know it's all relative, it's all good all together, and I guess year in and year out, you have to move money around based on what comes on the door. So uh, yeah. we'll see uh, We'll see who knocks on the door first this <laughs> in the next fiscal year. Well, it, 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 is, a, it, it is a challenge. I, like I said, I, I keep a spreadsheet and I do, I, I look at a 10 year history when, you know, looking to build the budget to come up with um, with the best estimate, but you just never know. I mean, zoning, we have three large cases going on. Um, right. Marker seven, well, as Mr. Mahullen pointed out, marker seven is really not zoning. It's a zoning board of appeals, but we have marker seven, landmark three, and um, that um, tower issue that we had. The tower issue. Yeah, so That's so we've we've had some um, large expenditure cases, and you you just never know in any given year. Yeah. We do we do uh, our best guess. Uh, it's very fluid, Paul. So you're bringing up a good point that probably needs to be said. It's very fluid. You know, the bottom line is we have enough money for our legal. We don't want to ever run out because we have an obligation to defend ourselves and in the town. Um, and also seek good advice and making good decisions. Um, but it is fluid. And we have changed some policies. For instance, zoning, uh, Mr. Mahalan points out that, you know, that shouldn't be on his budget. But in, in years past, any appeal, anything that went beyond the zoning commission and moving to an appeal process would go to general government. Um, we've changed that to say, you know what, that stays at zoning. It's still a zoning application, a zoning issue. And that better defines the money out, but also it's easier for us to discover, you know, how much we've spent on zoning or this particular case, if we get FOI or whatever, we can run that number. Um, and it, I think it's, it's more, there's better transparency when we do it that way rather than lumping it all into general. So we do I our mean, best. I mean, one thing, if you look at through the end of January, um, let's say, for example, we should, you know, like be at or around 60% of the budget expended year to date if we were expending everything, um, you know, in equal, equal monthly increments. So at the end of January, the legal portion of the budget is at 40%. 
I will point out though, that we do not pay the July invoice, I mean the June invoice until July. So in the month of June, we're gonna actually end up charging, um, you know, two months worth. So, you know, it's, it's good that we're a little under because, you know, it's gonna catch up with us, um, you know, at the end of the year. But, you know, so this year we're doing well, um, you know, we're doing well with the budgets. I mean, there were years in the past where we were spending almost $400,000 on legal fees. So, I mean, right now um, we've, you know, more or less been holding the line you know, in the, in the low 200 range. So, you know, right now we're kind of, you know, we're doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> right. Right. Thank you. Any other questions? It's awesome. I think that wraps it up. Am I right? I will move to adjourn. Oh, Kevin Terry, move to adjourn. What about our next meeting? Are we going to do something with that? When is that next meeting? Uh, the 17th. That's our next, one of the things we had talked right. about. So not until next Wednesday, we're going to meet before the meeting, my guess is probably at what, uh, five o'clock or something? 5.30. 5.30. So two hours before the meeting, that makes sense. And do we have mm -hmm. a list of the uh, budgets that we'll be reviewing? Um, I will send the agenda out tomorrow or later tonight, if you like. Yeah, I'll make it or tomorrow. I can just give you the list real quick if you don't want to know. I, according, I, the one I have shows uh, IT, dispatch, police, animal control, both fire departments and fire marshal, which pretty much is public safety. Kevin's it, got me. It's a big one. What we'll do is make the uh, Board of Selectmen meeting start immediately following budget deliberate, uh, bu budget um, discussions. So that way, because uh, those are some big meaty budgets and if we need to run a little over I'd rather do that than cut ourselves short. Um, I think the biggest the biggest um, really the biggest budget is uh, part of the discussion is the IT budget. IT right IT and of course the police is always a big budget <laughs> and some issues over there so there we go I had a motion from Kevin did I have a second? Somebody waved their hand okay I see Dan waving um, I'll uh, talk it. There you go. All in favor, say aye. 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 We are adjourned, folks. Thanks for right. tuning in tonight, and uh, uh, we'll see you next Wednesday. If you have any questions, you know where to find me.